Right, removing the pendulum from the Type 36. Open it. There's two ways of doing this. One is to undo the front screw on the electromagnet and swivel this pin out. Uh, this clock's been around since 1932 and the screw doesn't want to move and I'm used to not actually doing that so I'm not going to bother. So one thing is take your time. There's the hip toe we need to make sure we don't damage that and we don't damage any of these pawls. So what I do, take the engine, lift these two pawls up with my fingers Pendulum over there so it clears the hip toggle. Pull it carefully forwards, clearing the magnet. And bring it back to the middle position. Right, everything seems to be clearing, so now I'm going to carefully lift this up forward and whoop, out we come. That is pretty much that. Uh, when you put it down, I'm just going to put it in this corner. Make sure it's not too much of an angle because you don't want this section with the springs leaning against anything. I'm just going to put it here, turn it gently, 45 degrees. I'll just show you this. The pendulum is actually just off the wall there. And that's how you take a pendulum out of one of these. Right, taking one of these down. Just going to open the door here. Now, most of these types four, five, and six, or mark mark four, five, and six, have a little screw thing here that keeps it against the wall. So you want to remove that first. This actually is old; it doesn't have one. It just actually has a screw through the wood. So I'm just going to carefully take that out. What I didn't do in the first take. So, shut the door if it's got bolts or whatever, or lock, lock it. Uh, use a moistener. I've got one built in. Rub your hands until you get that friction just before they dry. That's what you're looking for. Take the clock, and quite close to it, lift it up. Off the wall and put it down. There we go. That's basically that. Obviously, don't do it with the pendulum in the brackets because you've got all that additional weight as well. So you can see the pendulum's to one side. So that's taking one down. Before you hang the clock, see if the bracket, top hanging bracket, is flush with the back or whether the clock is bent, or any of those. I'm going to put this room here. And this tells me that the bracket is very, very slightly proud and it will be flat against the wall. The reason for this is for when you're putting the screw in. So we take a screw. Where's Paddy's camera? Oh, there's somewhere. So we take a round-headed screw, not brass, uh, steel, iron, whatever it's called, with a head with a size that will just, I'm trying to do this one-handed, it's good fun, just fit in that shank. Another important thing at this stage, I'm just going to turn this light round a bit, or the clock, is to ensure that this has a widish head. You need to make sure that you can pull this down at least four centimeters, uh, four millimeters, without it slipping out. This, this will be important for later. Another thing you'll need, which you don't see when you buy these clocks, is a support bracket. You don't often see these because they were screwed on the wall of the postal buildings and exchanges and people didn't think to remove them. This one's actually wood. The original ones, certainly in the London North Central area, were 
two inch by two inch right angle bracket, metal bracket that was used for racking, for exchanges. But I'm using a bit of wood. It needs to be the width of the clock. It's actually very slightly wider. And eventually it needs to be finished to match your wall, not to match the clock. You don't want to be seeing it. So three holes and obviously three screws. Right, now, top of the slot here, imagine that this is actually a circle and measure in whatever scale you like from the middle of that circle to the top of the clock and in metric I'm looking at about eight millimeters. Okay. Or if you like, uh, five eighths of an inch, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And when you mark where you want the top of your clock, obviously mark down that amount for the screw hole. Right, now how far you put the screw in, I'm just going to turn this around again. As we already discovered, <clears throat> the bracket on here actually is going to be touching the wall, which is all pretty flush. So if you put the screw in and then put your fingers or pliers or something on it and then take it out, you will see the gap that you need to leave. When you put this screw in, leave it very slightly larger gap there. Obviously you don't want the gap too small or you'll be struggling on the wall with it and you won't be able to get it up. So let's get on with actually marking out and putting the clock up. Right, I'm going to drill a pilot hole in the wall and if you've got masonry, you'd need masonry, I've got wood. That is thinner than the screw, it stops the wood splitting and also helps the screw to go in. Right, so I've now installed the top screw and remembering that gap we saw when we tried it in the bracket and leaving another millimetre or two more than that. Especially useful if the wall isn't quite straight. Right, let's get the clock up. Right, getting it on the wall. What I've done here Instead of lifting it in one go, I've got this little strong footstool down. You see it's a pretty strong thing, which is a little bit short of where the bottom of the clock's going, so at least I can rest it on there, make it a bit easier. Screw is here. I need a pencil under the camera block. That'll do. So what we do. Make sure the door's shut or locked. Uh, take the key out if you've got it. So there's the screw, there's the middle of the clock. So first I'm just going to get it up on the stool here. There we go, that's that. Uh, yes, and that's just about the right height. So get it in the middle again. Make sure that your hands are just slightly damp so they have that friction so you don't drop it. Picking up and oh no. There we go, it's gone. So it's hanging on the screw. And we're going to take the weight of it and pull it very slightly forward, making sure I don't pull it off the screw. And this shows me that the obviously it needs to go back more. I'm not going to bother with that just at the moment. I'm not sure this wall's not straight, is it? That's fun. Okay, so that screw doesn't need to go in quite that much because it's full bridge. So, what we do now is we get some cotton. So, next, I need to check the clocks upright, remembering it's just on the one screw and it will actually swing. Especially when the door's open because that puts it off and balance. Oh, I'll need the key, that's very good. Open that, open the door, chip, what they usually do, here we go. Like that, okay, that's fine. I'm going to take this cotton 
and a jar. Hmm, that could be tricky. Let's drop this behind the centre of the bar at the top. I'm trying to get the case aligned and I'm not bothering to put the pendulum at the moment. So I'm just going to drop this down here. So it seems reasonably close. Uh, put this up there. Put the jar on it. Let's make sure that, that is in the middle. There, I know you can't really see it very well, but you'll get the idea. So, take a pencil, swing the clock. It could have come down a little bit more actually. If I do that, it's going to put a jar on me. Oh, it's just great. So, we're looking at about five centimetres. Just drop down to four. That should do it. Make sure it's in the middle again. Oh, you can measure it, I'll just do it by eye. Um, that case register's loose, but I know exactly where it goes, so let's bring this back until this is exactly over it. More. Try and stop it swinging. Oh, you're going to spin instead, that's fun. So, we're looking at a bit more. Stop doing that. Oh, that. The camera's at a slight angle, so it might look off. I'm just waiting for these two to turn back. That is actually about it. There. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line with the pencil on the wall under the clock exactly along the bottom of the clock so you just need to check the angle you've got your pencil at. There we go. This is quite important to get this line in exactly the right place. Right. I don't want the jar to come down on me so I'm just going to put my knee here actually. Take the plumb line out again, carefully watching the contacts and things as we go up. And there's that. Shut the door so we're not trying to swivel to one side, lock it. There we go. So, check, take the jar off the top, ho ho. Check on how much looseness there is on that top bracket. Well, this wall's a bit bent, so that could be fun, but... I'd say, actually, that, in my case, is exactly right, but if it's a little bit loose, you just take the clock down and screw it in a bit more. So, do I need the stand on? What am I doing? No, not at the moment. So, so key out, you'd be surprised self and that can catch on a pocket or something. And again, having a look at the hands and got friction, just lift it gently up, off, and put it down. Right, next part. Right, having come down to where the bottom of the clock will be, here is the pencil line. I've hung that off the supporting screw we already put in. Because the screw's got a slight thickness, it's very, very slightly to the left there. It's obviously hanging off the left side of the screw. And now I need to mark the first hole. So what I'm going to do, I've got the pre-drilled piece of wood here, which I can't seem to get the camera to injure. There we go. I've got a screw in the centre hole. Now these screws should just heck just go in without too much wiggle but it's it's flush in there it's got to get a little closer you know doing this with the camera and lighting and everything it's a bit of a laugh actually I'm going to try and move this light a bit but I don't think that's going to work there one moment so take this and one screw and a screwdriver. Put it on the line in the middle 
oddly enough, my hole is exactly the same fraction out from the middle, so that should be there. And get it on the line. Yeah, now you can't see it. But what you now do is using your fingers, inch it up about a millimetre and a half. Just a millimetre and a half. And then this is doing it left handed. Make a mark in the wall that you're going to find. I'm just going to screw this in a couple of turns. There we go. I can see that that's. Now I'm just picking up here. So we can see here if I tilt it, there's the line. And then as I move it back, it disappears because it's just a fraction above. Just about a millimetre and a half is all you need. The idea is that the weight of the clock will sit on here and the screw at the top just stops it from falling forwards off the wall. Which is why earlier, I'll just have to show you another screw, we checked to make sure that there was enough drift in this for it to go up and down without the screw actually coming off. I need about four to five millimetres. So I'm just going to drill a little pilot hole there for that and we'll come back in a moment. Right, just before I removed the wood, I straightened it and uh, so it was parallel with the line below and drew a second line so you can see there's just probably a couple of millimetre on that one. Might even be a bit too high. Right, so I've got the sensor screw in. It's just tight enough so that I can still swivel this, but it won't just rock and roll. Now you see the fainter top line there? Just there. And it should be exactly here as well. I can't see because of the light, but there it is. So that's in about the right position. So it screws in enough to take some weight, but this will still swivel. The point being when we put the clock back on in a moment, this will need to uh, swivel a bit, or may need to swivel a bit, so that it's supporting all the clock and not just on one end. And let's do that. Right, so I'm now going to drop the clock back on the screw, which I think I worked out actually didn't need tightening due to a slight warp in the wall. I will have to pad out the back of the clock later. So again, moistener, stall. Snap, until we get the friction. Up you come, don't stall too hard. Up with a screw, look for the middle of the clock. Up, over. So that's one reason we're having a stall there. This is most disappointing, you're not standing straight in front, giving that screw line. Okay, another go. I'm still got grip. Come on, up you go. There. There we go. Right, so that's going to sit on there and lift it up and drop it on there. It's in the middle. your own peace of mind, lift the clock up very slightly and make sure it doesn't come away from the top of the wall there. So just a little bit. There we go, that's still stuck in there so I know that I have to do that again. Just a little bit. Yeah that's fine. So it's not going to come off the screws holding it against the wall. So now we're back with the cotton. Now that it's sitting on the wood, that's nice. The um, key. Now that it's sitting on the wood, it shouldn't be prone to quite so much movement. But the door open. So there we go. Jar. Drop it down. Yeah. 
got. Smart about one of that. That's good. That's what's in the middle. And one's here. Let's go that way. The filth of the wood is in the wrong position. There we go. That's slightly wrong. It's about it there. And my piece of it seems to just be in the middle. Like I said, this register's actually loose. But I can tell the mould exactly where it goes, so that's not a problem. Yours can generally be screwed to the case. So. Oh heck, if it's not that near, it doesn't matter. So what's happened is you've moved this and it's swung left and right, so this wood has rotated underneath. Obviously you can't see it, we'll come to that in a minute. Most of these have a little bracket that comes through here, which you need to put on, I haven't shown you that because this clock doesn't have one. What it actually does have is it's the hole through the back for the countersunk screw. Right, it's still in the middle. So we'll now go and have a look at underneath the clock. Take this. Right, now the chances are that no matter how careful you take the clock off the wall, this will tilt a bit. One thing you can do, of course, is to tighten up the centre screw fully. That will just give that a go. But I'm just going to be careful here. Take the drill. Um, making sure it's at 90 degrees as I can and just carefully drill these holes. Ah, oh, this part of the wall's hollow, whereas the middle part, of course, had a beam. There we go, and that's that. Let me just put these in. Want to watch me screw in a couple of screws? No, let's come back in a minute. And in they go. Now at this point you can take the clock down again and finish the wood to match whatever the finish of your wall is. In this case I'm actually not going to bother because I don't really think I'm going to get much better than that being a wood wall. So that just leaves the support screw. Again, if it was a... Um, Oh, I'll show you on another clock actually, that'd be more sensible, wouldn't it? So if this was one of those with a little support bracket you see behind the pendulum there, there's an elongated slot in the clock, a little screw thing. Um, well, pretty much all GPO clocks have them, except the very early ones. So you just tilt the clock level and then screw up the screw at the back there. But this clock doesn't have one. Right, I'm just going to drill a small pilot hole here, just to ensure the screw goes in the right place. See, we've still got the cotton, let's just level that up to check. Yeah, that looks good. Right, let's not get it caught up with the drill. Put it in the centre of that hole. And just drill in a little bit. Just enough to centre the screw. I think we're done with the uh, get much contacts. Done with the timeline. Right, so it goes in, just make sure it's in straight, find your hole. There's the hole, is it straight? It seems near enough. Let's put this in. Right, it's beginning to stiffen up. It's in line, perfect. Just screw this home. So it's flush with the wood. Estimate to be about there. Are we moving? No. A little bit more maybe. Yeah, there we go. That is it. So we now have one level clock. Now we can go for putting the pendulum back in. Right, putting the pendulum in. Make sure the egg is on the left. Uh, loosen this arm off, I have already, and just pull it in. Take the pendulum, whichever hand you fancy. Lift it up. 
and push this in, keeping the bottom sticking out and it won't drop in like that. Lift these two pulls up and now very slowly drop it back when it gets to the magnet, move to the left. Moving back, just check the pulls aren't going to hit springs or anything. There's a little slot in the agate holder block, just put that where the heat toggle is there. Let go of these poles. Let go of this. Um, I forgot I just adjusted the position of this pendulum, so I need to move those out a little. Make sure the heat toggle's in. Just check if it's working, so we'll just uh, hand spin it up. There we go. Let's have a look at that. So the hip toggle is uh, working, it's obviously not connected yet. Yeah, it's in the good old day, we'll come back to that. Right, six second contacts. Yep, they're working okay. Uh, 30 second contacts are just coming up. You can see a deeper notch there. And here we go. They're working. A bit of a ping now, check that out. Oh, hip top has just operated, so what? Oh, there we go. Now that the clock is up, let me check the hip toggle is a bit of an hard angle, but in the middle of the agate. Uh, the poles and things are all correctly engaged. Uh, just going to give it another dry swing. There we go. Seems okay, a little bit more. Right, there we go. It seems to be fine. Uh, let's get it around to the uh, half minute. Yeah, it all seems fine. Let's go plug it in. Hopefully now it's going to go back. So let's have a little hip tool here. Wait for it to get hungry. Yes, it could be a while, so we'll come back here again. Oh, well, that works. Oh, the clock's worked. Ah, right. Oh, I think the tub is about ready to go. There we go. That's obviously running. I'm just going to zoom the 30 second round again. Here we are. Three, two, one. And we're running. Oh, also need to advance the clocks. <laughs> the hours out. Won't be doing that just yet. But there we are, and that is the 36. Temporarily wired in under test for GMT 35 bed clock circuit. Uh, excuse the hands on that, I haven't finished that yet. Wait for it. Working. So that is your basic end result there. Oh, one moment. There we go. Haven't finished this yet. Got the screws. <laughs> Stuff. There you go. Lovely. Let's try that again. Okay, a bit better. <laughs> there we are. So a 1942 Gillett and Johnson. Uh, type 36 mark 235 so old it doesn't even have an advanced retard switch as these were applied in the GMT 34s right well I think that's about that then nice so now the Gillett and Johnson uh, mark 235 type 36 is up monitor clocks up and it will be a standalone system with uh, GMT 35 just running some pulse clocks. Although get its power from the main system. If I come back here, hopefully we'll be able to see the whole family. There we go. Perfect. Let's out. <laughs>